now that the show exists, and obviously there was a big time period between when you were writing the novels, and now there's sort of this whole other world of people who have learned about you and all of that through the show, how that sort of, if that's kind of had an influence on the writing you're doing now, all of the other conversations that are happening. Well, it, it doesn't influence the writing I'm doing now, except to turn up the stress. <laughs> <laughs> Because the show, of course, has caught up to me, which I didn't actually think would ever happen. I had such a huge lead, but uh, <laughs> the truth is that uh, I'm a very slow writer, and David and Dan are, are, and their staff are faster than I am, and I'm writing 1,500-page manuscripts, and they're writing 60-page teleplays, and, you know, the production machinery is a, is a locomotive that can't stop, so, uh, you know, I've been hearing them come up behind me for years, and, and the, the question is, well, how can I make myself write faster? Well, I think by now the answer is I can't. I, I, I write at the pace I write, and, uh, and, and there we are. But what the show is doing is not going to change what the book is doing. I, you know, I started writing about these characters in this world in 1991. We didn't even have the first meetings to create the show until like 2008, so I got like a 17-year head start. <laughs> Tyrion, Tyrion is Tyrion in my mind. Uh, to the rest of the world, he may look like Peter Dinklage, but uh, as brilliant as Peter is, and he is brilliant, uh, my, the Tyrion in my head is still uh, not necessarily him. Is is he's, he's shorter he's and missing a nose and, at this uh, point too. I think right. He's, he's, yes, and he's lost half his nose. Yes, <laughs> which we couldn't do. We did think of doing that to Peter, but uh, <laughs> Peter was reluctant to actually let us amputate his nose. And, and so if we did it with CGI, we'd have to hear wear a little green snood for all of his scenes, and we would have to do it digitally, and uh, uh, that wouldn't, wouldn't have been very feasible. I'm intrigued to know, I mean, uh, you've often said that one of the kind of joys uh, when you sat down to write, uh, you know, initially a Game of Thrones and the rest of a song in Ice and Fire was after so many years of being told by Hollywood what you're writing is too long and too expensive, you know, that's not really a concern when you're, when you're writing novels. Do you find now that your uh, books have been adapted to one of, if not the most expensive TV shows in history? Are you kind of like, now, you know, I, I'm going to really crank up, I mean, the, 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 the battle sequences will be absurd certainly larger than they've ever been before. Is that any kind of consideration to sort of be almost in? No, I, once again, I don't let, I, you know, I, I put the show aside. Um, I don't do that, and I also don't do reverse. I never throttle back and say, oh, this is going to be too much for the show. They won't be able to afford it. I better not do it. Um, I do it anyway, and then it's up to David and Dan and their people to, to figure it out. And sometimes they can, and sometimes they can't. Uh, you know, in the first season in particular, we lost a lot of the battles, for example, because we simply did not have the budget to stage battles. But as the show has gotten more popular and our budgets have increased, now we can do sequences like Heart Home and uh, Blackwater, pretty cool battles. I mean, Blackwater, um, which I actually wrote the script for, um, adapting my own stories, is one of the best battles we know that we've done, and I think you have to say it's probably at least one of the 10 best battles that we've done on television. Um, but as great as it is uh, in the TV show, it's, it's not a third of what's on the book. I mean, in the book, there's all sorts of elements. There's, you know, there's an entire other army that's on the other thing that's trying to come across in boats. There's, you know, the, the burning ships kind of lock together. They crash into each other and they form a, a bridge of boats and people are swarming across that. I've got five gigantic trebuchets that are throwing, throwing traders uh, across the river and bodies are falling out of the sky. And the ship. I've got a chain that goes across the harbor that is on fire. Um, you know, lots and lots of elements that uh, we simply couldn't afford to do. But what they could afford to do was pretty cool, so. 